Hello, heavy citizens. Have you ever wanted to add some heavenly vocals to your composition? But many times it happens that something is off when you're trying to get your virtual choir sound like actual, real, human humans. Many libraries, even the best of them, will struggle with the human touch if you don't take the time with your sequence. It's part of technology and its limitations, but it also gives way to the art of crafting an organic breathing sequence using software instruments, which will open up infinite possibilities for your compositions. Today, I'll show you some ways I added realism to the choral section of a composition I did, showcasing our brand new free instrument, Foundations Emotive Choir. I will be shaping up a tempo map, doing lots of automation, and a couple of other neat tricks and ideas that can be applied to any virtual instrument you want. So, without any much further ado, let's go! Alright, now that we have heard the track, the first thing I'm going to show you is the piano sketch. With this, I was not only able to craft the melody, but I also was able to create a tempo map. Particularly with Logic, it's as easy as clicking on the tempo and clicking adapt. So this is how I ended up with the basic tempo, which was around 100 BPM and it fluctuates. And then I will further add some manual adjustments to those tempos. As I listen to the piece, I want to make sure that it breathes in the way that feels natural and organic. And for the next thing, instead of having one instance of Foundation's Emotive Choir, I basically created three different instances that will represent each of the different voices. This will allow me to mix them a little bit different to have more control over the sense of space of this ensemble. So for this first passage, all together sounds like this. Not just the top melody. Now just a mid. Now the low. To further add sense of space, I have panned them slightly different with the high going towards the left mid towards the right and I narrowed the stereo image of the low and panned it straight into the middle. I also added a little bit more reverb on that one and a little less on high and mid. Basically placing each choir section in a different plane. The other thing that's really effective is stacking different instances to expand the size. Basically I have a whole different set of high, mid and low voices that have, are using a slightly different version of Foundation's choir. So here's the balance of the first three instances, fairly similar, and the auxiliary have more texture, less of the clean voices, which will give them more dreamy, spacious quality. Notice how coming from the previous phrase into that one, adding the extra layers with more ambience 
creates this sort of like sense of grandeur and bigness. Something that's important when you're stacking different instances that are playing the same note is making sure they don't face. It's as easy as going into the ADSR, changing the offset and adding some randomness. And then playing with the ADSR, you can add a little different quality to each of your instances. That way the attacks are a little different and make sure to tweak your releases for them to sound as natural as possible. And for this kind of like very emotional human instruments, Making sure that the cutoff of each instance feels right is super important. This is particularly notable at the ends of the phrases. Notice how clean the endings of these long notes are. Imagine if you were an orchestra conductor, if you were to do like this, the choir will react the same way. And that's a good way of approaching it when you are composing. So it's a lot, it takes a lot of listening to tracks and listening to your own piece to get it to a point where it feels right. Once you have releases that feel natural, you want the piece to breathe. So we can go back to the tempo map. As you can see, the way that it's laid out, it's not entirely how it turned out right after I first composed it. I started massaging the tempo in a way for it to do like a ralentendo. So it's easy to see that at the end of each of the phrases, there's a, like a big slowdown, which is not because the tempo is actually slowing down. It's a way of recreating the conductor, just letting the choir play, cutting it off and starting again. There's a point in which you're like, here's where it starts again. And again, this comes from a lot of intuition and your own taste. A piece could be quicker, a piece could be slower. And it's important to know that you can mangle the tempo map as much as you need to, to get that thing feeling the way you would like conduct it if you were facing this choir in real life. Another neat trick is that through orchestration, you are able to craft more complex melodies that feel more real by playing to the strength of an instrument. For example, if we go back to the piano sketch, you'll notice how the melody goes in this particular moment of the song. By dividing that melody into two different voices, you allow to each of the notes to breathe a little bit more it ends up feeling more interesting because the melody is coming from different sides of the space. And it also feels way more clean as if you were sort of like doing a legato, but an orchestrated legato. The last thing we want to do to massage the actual voices is at automation. Basically, you want to write the volume for the contour of each of the long notes to have like an arc. And you play with this alongside with the velocity of each note, then you're able to control the placement, the volume, and the exact balance between each of the notes as if you were very carefully crafting the overall sound of the piece. I mean, you are very carefully crafting the overall sound of the piece. So without automation, With automation, it's as if we're trying to recreate the breath. And when you stack different vo voices, it all comes back to life because when one dips, the other one stays, and then the other one goes through, then they all come together. And they're, at that interplay is what creates this dynamism.
The neat thing about all of these techniques is that you can apply them to pretty much all of the other instruments. Here's a glimpse of, of all the modulation going on in the orchestral section, which has been done with MIDI CC1. But when you don't have MIDI CC1, you always have your volume faders. Go use your volume faders. So there you have it. If you like what you see, if you like what you hear, make sure to follow us and to subscribe. Go click on the little buttons and links below. Check out Foundations Emotive Choir, and you can also check out and download the previous Foundation series of instruments. They are all free and they're all very cool. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you around.